I don't always use rooting hormone, but if I do, I use aloe vera. <laughs> okay, that was my parody on a little commercial that was famous for a while. And I'm surprised I got through it without laughing any more than I did. Let's talk about rooting hormones. Hey, it's Elise. I'm glad you stopped by. Now, do you have to use a rooting hormone? Absolutely not. Does it help? Yes, it will help sometimes, and it will help more on some plants than others. And there is a whole list of rooting hormones that you can use. Of course, you can go and buy your rooting hormone. In little boxes, little containers, liquid gel powder form. Or you can go to your kitchen cupboard or out into your landscape and find a lots of free material that you can use as a rooting hormone. All a rooting hormone is, is a product that you put at the end of your cutting that will help facilitate root growth. And rooting hormones can be apple cider vinegar, cinnamon water, aloe, honey, willow water, aspirin, human saliva, coconut water, moringa leaf water, chamomile tea, human urine, and many, many more. Let's go to your spice cabinet. Go and look outside at your plants. If you know you have a plant or a tree that is nutritious and is maybe a little antifungal, a little antibacterial, make you a rooting hormone out of that. Just make some tea water out of it. So you really don't have to buy a rooting hormone. And again, you don't have to use it. Sometimes it does help. And this is what an old timer told me many, many years ago. Your cutting, if it is from a mature plant that has flowered or set fruit, it's going to have energy left in the cutting and it will have that hormone in it already. What you really want to do is take your cuttings Stick your cuttings just as soon as possible. Now, everybody does this different, and you'll find all different kind of versions. My take on it is, this is the real life. You do it when you can do it with what you have. So, okay, the best time to take cuttings may be early in the morning, but you may not be able to do that, so you take cuttings whenever you can. The best way to do it, as soon as you take your cuttings, you go ahead and stick them in your pots. But you can't always do that. What if you're at a friend's house and you take a cutting? Well, the best thing to do in that case is to wrap it in a little damp paper towel, put it in a bag, uh, put in a little glass of water, something to keep that cutting hydrated. So you do the best you can with what you have when you have it. That's it. Use rooting hormones if you have just a few cuttings of a plant and you really want them to take. If you have something special, something you can't get a real often, you know, then of course increase your odds of that cutting taking by using rooting hormones. Do everything you can. I do. But on the whole, I don't use a rooting hormone unless I know that that plant is a little finicky about rooting. So let's get the aloe ready and we'll talk more about aloe in other videos because I've got some I need to repot. This video is just about using aloe as a rooting hormone. There are numerous ways to prepare your aloe to use it as a rooting hormone. Just like you want to have as fresh of cuttings as you possibly can, you also want your aloe to be cut as fresh as possible. And you can see where I've already cut pieces off of this one. If I only have a few cuttings, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to take a tip off. Now, your leaf will not grow back. Aloe grows from the center of the rosette, but this will seal over. It might even look a little yucky for a while, <laughs> but you don't use the whole leaf. So I can come back now and use another piece or two of this leaf. If you've got a lots of cuttings, go ahead and cut you a piece off. But you can just cut a tip off. All right, 
Once you've got your aloe leaf cut, whether you've got a tip or a whole piece, you want to prep it. You don't have to. This is absolutely a personal choice. And I'm just going to go in here, cut this little piece off. Now, if you're going to work with larger pieces, especially if you've got little hands around that's going to be helping you, go ahead and cut that off. Aloe, this variety is extremely serrated. Now there's four or 500 varieties of aloe. They are not all created equal. And they all are not used as a rooting hormone. But you can see where this sealed up. So I cut that off. Now you've got a couple of options here. Move the camera down just a wee bit. You can go in and fillet this piece, just like you would fillet a fish, piece of shrimp, piece of chicken, and open it completely up. And then you have this wonderful goo on each side. Now, my grandmother did it this way. Then sometimes she would take her knife and go in and just lightly score it, and it breaks that gel up a little bit more. If you do not use this whole piece of aloe, just put it back together put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your refrigerator and it will last for a little while. So that's a way to do it. Another way is to take your piece of aloe, put it in your blender, add a little water and make a gel out of it that you can use to stick your uh, cuttings into. You can use the outside leaf and you can use the whole thing or you can just scrape the gel out and use it that way. Here's my favorite. Let's see, I'm going to go back over here and take this one because it is sealed up. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to come in here and just gently make a little pocket in here. This is my favorite way to do. And this works whether you have two or three or a dozen cuttings. I have my pot of soil and I have my cuttings. All cuttings are basically prepared the same way. You want to cut your cutting right below a node and a node is where a leaf came out. You can cut them at an angle or you can cut them straight across. You can wound them which is simply taking a knife, the edge of your clippers, and just scarring them just a little bit. I scar them especially if they're ha larger hardwood cuttings. But that's up to you. You don't have to. You want to take all your bottom leaves off. If you can, do leave a little leaf material. And when you leave a little leaf material on, that helps the plant to continue with photosynthesis which will bring in energy and sugars into the plant. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you're just going to get a stick. So do the best you can. So then you take your uh, cutting and you just put it in that little pocket and it coats it for you. Now I always make my hole first. If you just take your cutting, especially when you're using one of the powder rooting hormones, and you just stick it down in, a lots of your rooting hormones just going to wipe off. This way, it stays on the cutting better, and then I just snug it in. This is just all-purpose soil. It's got a lots of organic material in it, and it is slightly moist. If you moisten your soil, it will help that cutting to stick better. And do another one and of course you can go through and put all your cutting uh, holes in first if you wish use your finger pencil whatever you wish that's how easy it is now to increase your odds of your cuttings taking if you have enough resource material 
do as many cuttings as you can. All different sizes, all different diameters, different lengths. And that's it. Now, these will go in indirect light with a label on them with the date, what they are. And I will miss them. In probably about a week, I'll come back and give them a really light solution of uh, Epsom salts water, which will help with the stress of being cut. Now, these are Suriname cherries. They sometimes will root extremely easy, but we are not at the prime cutting part of the year, which is spring or fall. But again, you have to do it when you can do it. I'm going to cut that leaf off just a little bit more. The more foliage you leave on, the more that that cutting is going to give energy to that foliage. And you don't want it to do that. You want the energy to go to your roots. But if all possible, do leave a little of your green on. If you have really, really soft tips, cut them off. If you have flowers, cut them off. If you have young fruit, young buds, cut it off. You want the basic cutting with a few leaves. And that's it. How easy. It only took a few minutes. So that's ready to be misted, labeled, and go somewhere warm and in direct light. Now, I'm in zone 9B, so I don't always tint mine, but you can't tint them. Just put a couple of longer sticks, wrap some plastic, a bag, big baggie, anything like that over it. If you don't have a big baggie, you can always use a plastic grocery bag, but you don't want the plastic sitting on the cutting itself. That's ready to go. Now, this won't be wasted. These will go into sacks for more cuttings because I do plan on doing some cuttings soon. If I decide I don't want to do any cuttings or if it gets too old before I can get back to do the cuttings, this will go in my compost pile. They are doing some research now on the surface of the leaf for pest control. So you can always just take this whole piece with the goose side down and lay it underneath your plants. This will go ahead and degrade and you can use this part as fertilizer. Maybe this will help deter some pests. So nothing is wasted. I don't have to worry about wasting any of it. But I really like the pocket method. Neat, huh? And again, you can use that pocket method right on the tip. Come in and just take a tip off, slice that interior open a little bit, put your cuttings right down in it. That's how easy it is, that's how neat it is. And again, make sure you label, <laughs> label, label. You don't wanna put your cuttings out in real hot sun or too cold of weather. If you got a little hot house, put them in a hot house. Make sure they don't dry out. All this energy from this cutting is going to be, we want it to go to roots, not from lee, not to leaves, not to fruit, not to flowers. And it is very hard sometimes to sit there and cut off beautiful flowers off of your cuttings. But it's something that has to be done. So that's it. Now, if something else comes along that I like better or that is easier, works better, I'll try it, of course. I do not grow aloe vera for any medicinal reasons, nor do I eat it. I grow it as an ornamental. I grow it to use as a rooting hormone. I also use it as a fungicide. If I'm planting yams and potatoes and things like that, I will quite often just wipe them down with aloe. If we have damage to a plant, I'll wipe them down with aloe gel. It works. It seals it off. 
helps stop it from getting disease and all those nasty little pathogens that you don't want your plants to get. We're going to come back, talk more about aloe. I've got some I need to repot. It's a wonderful plant, something that's so easy to grow in anybody's garden, in the ground, in containers, inside, outside. Fantastic rooting hormone. Now, I do have some other ideas in mind for rooting hormones. I'll try it first. If it works, I'll get back to you on it. That's it. I'm a new channel. If you can help me grow, be really nice. Like, share, subscribe. Watch the video in its entirety because YouTube tracks the amount of time the videos are watched. Don't forget to hit the notification bell till we speak again. I hope you have a fantastic day.